Thanks for tuning in to this video. It is a final follow-up to number 67, 68 and 69. In those videos we looked at ways that you can represent fitness testing data as compared to things such as individual team or generic benchmarks and also as a way to identify if the change between one test and another test is meaningful or not. This particular video looks to pull various concepts together and see that if you can put together some of these functions and have them work as a collective, then you can accomplish some quite interesting things. What we have here is the finished product. We'll go back a few steps and recreate this shortly. But what we have is the ability to select either football or hockey. What happens when you do that is that the names that appear in column J change. You can select either strength, speed or power. If you do so, the data imports from the table in columns A to G. And then there is some uh, descriptions around that data if you like. Firstly, there are some colors and um, then there is a indication of whether the change was meaningful or not. So we're going to go through the steps required to set up the controls for the colors and for these arrows here. If we start with this grid being empty then the first step is to pull in the correct names into column J. Now in a previous video we looked at the use of the indirect function. We have two named ranges called football and hockey and those named ranges if I select one of them is just a list of names. We need a formula that can extract out the first then the second then the third name from that list. Index is the formula that we want. The first requirement is to enter the array we don't know which team is going to be selected, which sport, so we need to use the indirect function and click on the drop down box selected item in J4 and lock it. If we do that, then whatever team we select from that box will drive the names that appear in column J. Once we've done that, we just have to select the number incrementer on the left there I put that in to make the formula as simple as possible. Dragging it all the way down produces the 13 names in hockey and if we change this one to football it pulls in four, 14 names so it is working just fine. The next thing we want to be able to do is help ourselves out just a little bit. So in a previous example we only looked at one test measurement and so we could lock in the column of the table that we were looking for. Here we've got the option to select the test strength, speed and power as the simple way that I've referred to these. And so that makes it a little bit more challenging. On the right hand side I've created a little grid and it's got three columns of information next to each test. The first one is the most simple and is what column number does this variable have in the table. Strength is column E which is column 5. So we've got that listed down here and I can write a function here to extract the column number. And so that's telling us that strength is column 5, speed is column 6, and power is column 7. I can get straight on to extracting information into our table now. I'm going to use some ifs for that. The first variable is the array that we are looking to do the sum of. Now we need to use whatever has been selected as our driver for that. Currently it says power and our helper column tells us that is in column 7. So I can use the index function. I can skip over the row number just by putting a comma but for column number I select 7. That is the helper cell that I just created a second ago. 
that'll change if I choose a different variable. So that's what's going to be summed and now my criteria is relatively easy. Athlete data, test label and click that column heading, lock it by row. Our next criteria is obviously athlete name. Our tooltip is hiding the name, so I'm just going to use my arrow keys to find it. And if I close that off, it's going to extract out a power score for each athlete. And by dragging it down, we fill it in. Let's see what happens if we change that to strength and it's updating. So we know that that little column helper is working for us. If I do another little check to see whether or not it changes with different athletes, we can see that it does. So we're on track nicely. There are a few zeros which I don't like. In a previous example, we used the situation where an if equation can switch it off and on. So if this row number here is greater than our little counter, now that counter is just telling us how many names are in the selected list. If it is greater than that, then leave it blank because there's no information to be found. And now as I copy it down, we can see those zeros are gone. So that's working pretty well. Inside the formula bar, I'm going to copy that. The reason I go inside the formula bar is because that maintains all the cell references. Now before I hit enter, all I need to do is drag that across to our second column heading, which in this case says pre-season 2. A simple change formula will tell us how much difference there is between the first test and the second test. And just one final check, we can still see that we're getting things to update as we make different selections. So all our formula are currently quite dynamic. We've used an index function to select names. The name and the test period are driving which data is selected. And we can choose which variable goes into that data table with the selection box here. So things are working quite nicely so far. Next step is to identify whether or not the change that has been recorded is meaningful or not. To allow for that to work, what I have is three separate reference tables. What I've done is given them a name which is strength, speed, and power. And so why I've done that is because it makes it a lot easier to write the formula because we can use that indirect function to select the correct table based upon whatever's been chosen in this drop down box. You may not have seen the use of a lookup function returning a symbol. A symbol can be returned just like anything else as long as it is arranged correctly. So I have the worthwhile change tables organized very carefully for each of the variables. And you'll note that with regard to speed, a lower number is better so that the order is a little bit reversed. Earlier in the exercise, we created a cell that told us which column the selected variable could be found in the table. The table that was looked up also contains information about whether a test is positive. That's just something that I refer to as a test that is better the higher the number, so for example a strength score, versus a test that I call negative, which is better when it is a lower score, such as speed, and some, some people might argue also things such as skin folds. What I also want to create is a helper cell that tells us the type of the test. So it's exactly the same as the formula above.
and it tells us that speed is negative but the strength is positive so it seems to be working just fine. The last step that I want to go through is do conditional formatting on this particular table and I want to do two layers of conditional formatting. The first layer is that a particular score is within the boundaries of position benchmarks. So it's either red, orange or green depending on which position the athlete is in. The second conditional format that I want to put in place is check to see whether a particular score is greater than the personal best from the last season. And to help me with that I've got tables that have the position benchmarks for each of the different tests and it's also got a table where there is the previous best from last season. The conditional formatting rules are fairly complicated when you're trying to do this kind of intricate method. And so what I tend to do is have a conditional format table somewhere on my control panel sheet. I've got it here simply because it makes it better for the example, but normally I'd hide this away. What we're trying to find out is in each instance what colour we should be turning the cell in the actual presentation table. To get things started and to make this helper table be sensible and easy to understand, I'm simply going to pull across the names. Where am I pulling them from? The grid that we've already created. I can now go to the data table to pull out what position each athlete was in. And now that I've done that I can extract out whether the colour should be green, orange or red. Now this is going to be based upon the test selected. If you've chosen speed then you can see in the speed lookup table that things have been flipped around. We've got green, orange, red from left to right, whereas for the other two tables that is strength and power. It goes red, orange, green from left to right. The second task that we have is to identify whether a particular score is greater than or equal to last season's best. Now this formula looks pretty complicated and that is because we have to do everything twice. We have to say that if it is speed that is selected then our time needs to be less than or equal to last year's best. Otherwise it needs to be greater than or equal to. That is what makes the formula look so complex. And all we have done in this particular case is ask the formula to return a 1 if a score is greater than or equal to last season's best. So we can see that Valerie in pre-season 3 has got a personal best. Let's have a look and check that out. Valerie scored 144 on the strength test. And as we can see down in the table here, her previous best was 143. So that criteria was met and she receives a bolding of her score to indicate that she scored above or equal to last season's PB. So now that we know that information what we want to be able to do is use it to create our conditional formatting system. Now some people don't like conditional formatting uh, to be really brutal and right in your face so I like to have a little switch in place that allows you to turn it off or on. And so something like this works really well. Simply having a drop down list that says colors on or colors off. If I go to the data validation settings, all I've done is actually type it directly into the source box. I haven't created a list in some cells somewhere and referred to that list. That's what I'd do if the list was quite long, if there were several options. But in this case it's either on or off, you could use a check box, you could use a drop down box like I have, but either way what you're trying to do is allow people to say actually I don't want the colours on, it's a bit too uh, busy for me. And so we've got that as a criteria now. What we can do is create our conditional formatting rules. We need to select all of the cells that might have data in them. That includes the six blank ones at the bottom. If you select the entire lot on the Home tab, click Conditional Formatting and New Rule. 
we need to use a formula to determine which cells to format. In instances where this is true is where we want to highlight a particular colour. Now this formula says if it is a number and if we want the colours turned on and if the reference cell in our helper table to the right says green then we want to make it green. and we click OK. We need to add another rule. Instead of green, we need to say orange. And we need to choose orange as our color. And so things are filling in. Another thing that we want to do is identify whether something is a PB. We've got so much colour in the chart already, we've got so much colour in the grid already that it's a little bit marginal to add anything else. So what I tend to do is either italicise or bold it or both. So let's have a go at that. Keeping the cells selected just as they have been for the previous three conditional formatting rules. We add a new one, again we use a formula. This time the formula simply says that uh, there has to be a number, colours have to be on, and there needs to be a 1 in our helper column. If there is, choose the font tab, keep it black, bold italic, and click OK. And we can see only one meets our criteria this time. Let's see if we change to pre-season 2. Or if we choose hockey, we can see that Kath Vick has scored PBs on both. And the final step in the process is to see whether our colors on and colors off button works, which it does. So we can decide whether we want to have conditional formats turned off or on. And now that simply requires A for you to have a trigger somewhere a drop-down box is the method that I tend to use. Um, that's because I don't really like the check boxes that much. But um, certainly uh, an interesting option. What it does mean is that you can't use simple conditional formatting rules. You need to use the formula uh, to define what changes colors and what looks a certain way. Now I apologize for racing through this quite quickly, but that's because we've repeated uh, essentially tricks from the previous three videos. And this is really just pulling things together, so I didn't want to revisit everything and have a 45-minute a epic. If you did want a copy of this file to look through to help unravel some of the formulas, then please email at the address shown, and uh, stay tuned for more videos coming soon.